Well, good morning, everyone. It's uh, lovely to see you here today, and welcome to today's session on learner engagement. And I'm um, delighted to be joined by two colleagues. We've got uh, Phil Storrier from Dumfries and Galloway College, and we have Ross Brand from New College Lanarkshire. So they're going to be sharing a little bit about their journey and uh, in terms of taking learner engagement uh, forward within their colleges. And so we're looking forward to hear hearing from them. We, we know learner engagement has been you know, on the agenda for many years. And I think back to earlier days when uh, in Education Scotland, where we had the framework and there's a whole section on learner engagement. And uh, you know, it has developed over the years. And uh, I love that diagram uh, that uh, comes from, and I can't remember now whether it's uh, whether it's Sparks or NUS, but it's the staircase uh, of learner engagement going from uh, just asking a few questions uh, through surveys to partnership working uh, with students and student associations and learners uh, across the piece. So um, it, delighted to see that the, you know, the journey continues. And uh, we think of learner engagement uh, in the whole context uh, of learning engagement, that whole student experience, whether that be in individual classes, uh, in subjects, right to across the, the whole uh, experience across the college. So we'll hear from them both. And what we'd like to hear is, is not just where the journey's going, but actually the impact of COVID as well. And hopefully we'll also hear some things that actually have been experienced through the current uh, last year, which are things that have uh, captured something you don't want to lose as well uh, moving forward. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Phil first, who's going to share something of the uh, Dumfries and Galloway story. So Phil, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Scott. Um, and I'll just uh, try and share my screen if I can. Is that working? Have you seen that? Yes, we can see Excellent. that now, yes. Okay, right. Thanks uh, and good morning, colleagues, and thanks to everyone for the invitation to come along. My name is uh, Phil Storier and I am Director of Student Experience and Academic Performance at Dumfries and Galloway College. Um, I've got 10 minutes to try and share with you just a wee bit of the work that we've been doing around uh, student engagement and how that's going to support our ongoing self-evaluation processes. Um, so some, some of our initial considerations just before I go into a wee bit of the detail of what, what we've done and, and what we've gathered is, you know, the first thing for me is that we ignore student feedback at our peril. You know, it's absolutely critical to everything that we do and particularly through this phase that we understand the impact that it's having. But I always caveat that in terms of, you know, we have to manage expectations around what we're going to do with that feedback. So the student wants versus, you know, what the students need versus the current situation which is a pandemic and what we can realistically achieve just now and moving forward. I'm very keen that through our learner engagement processes we recognise the people behind the numbers and try and find some stories from the information and the data that we gather. Um, but I'm also uh, clear that we have to have feedback that can have an impact. You know, we have to really be clever with how uh, we engage our students, what feedback we, we, we pull in so that we can have an impact with that and it's not feedback for feedback's sake. And then one thing we're learning is let's not start from scratch all the time. Let's use resources and one of the, the key resources that we've used just now has been the Sparks Toolkit. So to give you a wee bit of context that in block one in terms of carrying out some learner feedback and evaluation, we, we, I suppose it was a bit of a traditional approach. We designed a, a questionnaire. Um, we went out to students individually and, and tried to, to prompt responses from them to our student association and our class reps. The focus in block one for us was really around, around access. You know, we were really interested in how students were accessing their learning in that piece. So we asked questions around devices. We asked questions around suitable spaces. And did they have suitable spaces to, to both attend classes in, but also to work? And digital literacy was a key one. We, we had to understand confidence and competence around the tools that we were asking them to use for their courses. We asked around enjoyment and were they enjoying it. And then we asked some quite direct questions about retention and how students were feeling that experience early on and where they felt you know, what their position might be. It gave us some really good information. It gave us some really good individual feedback from students and it allowed us to act quite swiftly at that point in time around you know, accessing devices to students and getting them to them. We created learning spaces in the college that were COVID secure and safe for students who'd identified that they were struggling to study at home. 
um, and that had a, had, a, had a big impact, you know, for those students that we worked with uh, around retention and keeping them on site. It's also informed our, our thinking for next year, so through our application process and our enrolment processes, what information do we now need to gather around particular, uh, particular around digital. But one thing that we found was that the return rate wasn't where we maybe wanted it to be. It wasn't as high as we would have liked, so we didn't feel that we necessarily got the, the, a broad uh, spectrum across our whole student population. So that's what we did in, in Block 1. Myself and the student engagement team then did a bit of thinking around, okay, block two, you know, we want to get back into the learners, we want to see where the story is now, and we want to use that to take more actions, but also to inform us moving forward. But there was some thinking that we had to, to, to consider, so it was about how could we get greater input from across a broader range uh, of our student body. We really wanted to focus more on learning, teaching, and assessment during the, um, uh, the pandemic. Um, and we wanted to design something that would give us both some quick wins um, because you know I feel that if you can get some quick wins and enhances the um, trust in that feedback and that process that, that learners are engaging in and also we needed some meaningful data for staff to use to respond to now um, but also to evaluate going forward and how it was going to inform our practice particularly around digital um, delivery learning and teaching. So for block two um, the first protocol for me, and I'd actually picked it up through one of the virtual bridge sessions, was we, we turned to the Sparks uh, toolkit. Um, and, you know, I'd found that a really effective tool, a really interesting tool. And as I sat reading through it, I thought there were some really good questions, some really good considerations for both us as, as a college, but also things for students to consider. So that was the first starting point for us. And from the toolkit, um, the themes down the left-hand side were the themes that we felt we wanted to hone in on. Um, for our students. So access to learning resources. And by that we meant, you know, from that transition to working at home, what resources did you have? What resources were you missing? We were keen to see if they could identify gaps in knowledge. Um, the substitution of practical, and I put practical in inverted, because for me, you know, I think practical should go across all our teaching, but you know, we still have this divide between theory and practical. Um, innovative pedagogy, we were, we were keen to pull that out. We were keen to see if our students felt there had been innovation in teaching. And of course, something that for me has to underpin everything was the additional support services and how were students aware of those services around particular mental health and funding. So we took the toolkit, we pulled out those themes, but what we felt was important with, you know, it was quite jargon heavy. It was quite, um, you know, some of the direct uh, content in there. We, we had to make sure that our students would understand and engage in it. So we did a bit of socialization. We took it to students and we took it to staff. So we took it to students to see do you understand this? Do you understand what it means and how it's going to feel for you and why we're trying to do this piece of work? We took it to staff to say, if we pull in the, this data from these questions, is there going to be something meaningful for you to pull out? So we then turned it into a, an online um, kind of form. But for me, what was important was we decided in Block 2 not to put it out to individual students. And what we've done is we've approached it through a course um, and a, a class cohort approach. So what we've used as our, our mechanism for, for pulling in the feedback in Block 2 around learning teaching as our class reps. One thing that has really come through is that our class reps have remained strong and our student engagement team has been excellent at, at keeping numbers high, over 120 at the, at the minute class reps, which is fantastic. And we felt that that was our best tool for getting a broader range of, of feedback from students. So we developed a um, set of questions and then with the class reps, what we did was a wee bit of a, a coaching session so uh, our staff worked with them to say, you know, here's what we're trying to do, here's what we want to pull, and here's what we're trying to find out. But here's also some tips that you can use to, to work with your peers within your classes to, to submit a kind of class response, if you like. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we were looking for was an overall experience from that class group. So in block one, we had focused on individuals, and now we were keen to get a class response around learning and teaching. Um, I've just shown a, a few kind of snapshots of how we've then pulled this data together. So uh, our performance manager has then uh, converted this into an Excel uh, Word document. Now, I'm not particularly great with Excel. She's done amazing, uh, wonderful things with this. So what we are able to do now is as the data is coming through from our class groups, and at the minute we're sitting at about a 50% return from our classes uh, in a couple of weeks, um, she's pulling through this live data. So it means that we can act on it as it's coming in from classes. Um, we, we've conditioned the, the, the spreadsheet so that it's honing in on the questions and we're starting to colour code aspects. So where you can see things highlighted in green, you know, we've got areas of real success, where it's gone well, where it's 
point in red is issues that we have to address. So there's direct points that we have to go to. So some of that is around classes not being aware of mental health support that's available to them just now, for example. And what this allows us to do is get a visual snapshot of where we've got success and where we've got concern, but we're able to take quite swift action. Again, it's about you know, engaging our learners to say, okay, we want to know what your experience is like, but we're going to act on it. So there's two things. We can act on it now, but also we're really using it for, for moving forward. It's been great for identifying good practice. So we've got a whole column in there where students have identified innovative teaching that they've experienced in, the, in their classes. And that allows us, you know, it gives us a wee snapshot of where to go moving forward for self-evaluation. And then staff, you know, the, the necessary staff will get access to this. So curriculum managers, curriculum teams and support services. So they can start to address some of the immediate issues. And then myself and my team will pull this out for broader college evaluation. From the process, our early readouts are that overall our students are feeling really supported. Um, replication, as, as I'm sure everyone's experience of practical, as, as they're calling it, is a key issue. And that is the skill development, the stuff that we can't do in the college building. And that, you know, it's important for us to feel that. We were expecting it, but we were also able through the process of class reps to get an understanding from students that that is in some uh, respects out of our control. Um, we pulled through lots of really detailed examples of good practice. And I think sometimes staff maybe won't pull that through themselves. They don't want to share that, but where the students are giving it to us. Um, most were aware of our support services and almost all of them, almost all the classes so far are saying that staff are receptive to student feedback. So there's lots and lots of positives for us to pull from this. Um, the next steps for us is, uh, in terms of, of my areas and my teams to think about is, we're going to hit hone in on those targeted responses to specific aspects of feedback. We, we will use this data with the curriculum and support teams to you know, self-evaluate and part of that is what we're doing now and what we're doing moving forward. I'm really keen to use this to showcase good examples and pull out examples of good practice. Um, from the SPARTS toolkit, we've already got another venture underway where the student support team and the student association are looking to do a bit of a joint evaluation on support services using the toolkit, but probably doing it in a slightly different way. Um, and we're also hoping to pull through some self-evaluation work, uh, evaluation workshops because one thing that would come from this is that we have we now we're bringing in rich data from our students about their experience of, of the current learning environment. Um, but we also need a bit of a chance now to pause and reflect on that, you know, because it's been 100 miles an hour as we are just now. So, you know, we can act and respond to students now with what they're, what they're needing to support them now. But also what we've said to them is that this is critical for us as a college to move that going forward and that support and their peers that are going to come behind them or potentially get progression into next year. So for me, a big piece would be pausing and reflecting on, on that data. And I think that's 11 minutes. And so I'm happy to stop at that point, if that's okay. Thanks very much, uh, Phil. That, that was great. You can pause for breath. Uh, pause for breath now. So <laughs> uh, thank you. And I, I like your, your, your use of uh, an education Scotland phrase, almost all. <laughs> Um, just before I hand uh, uh, over now to, to Ross, um, uh, I'll just give a, a quick plug for the staircase. Thanks to uh, Simon uh, for, for sending that through. And uh, it's interesting that last comment that you, you made, Phil, about you know working with the student association uh, and so on and partner with them. And that's moving up the staircase, getting to that uh, top part is uh, working with students and the student body, student association. Uh, as partners uh, in the whole of, of taking forward the, the, the student experience. There we go. So, um, Ross, uh, over to you now. Uh, I know you've doing, been doing a lot of work, you know, including with the Student Association and running Be Heard sessions, uh, which fit into uh, this whole the learner engagement uh, agenda. So, uh, we'd like to hear from you now and uh, just what's happening at New College uh, Lanarkshire. Okay, um, yeah, Phil, that was a great presentation. Thanks very much. A lot of familiar themes uh, present there that, that I can that I can uh, take back to, to, our, to our own college. So I've kind of been drafted in as a last minute substitute for one of my colleagues. So I don't have a, a great presentation or anything like that. It's just, so I'm just going to talk around a few key points that, that, is, uh, that, that is kind of crucial to our successes. So I've been asked to kind of provide an overview of how we've adapted our or learning engagement practices during the lockdown. I think it's been key that we've been, that any model that we've prepared uh, has clear communication between the staff and the students. So our kind of main feedback vehicle is, is uh, a platform we call Be Heard. 
and it's a forum that's been in operation for a number of years. Uh, previously, it had been used as a feedback tool between our reps and our senior management team, and that was to allow them an opportunity to discuss a wider range of student experience issues where we would hire out or we would book out the student common area and uh, a, a horde of reps would descend upon this, the senior management team and then uh, bombard them with their, with their feedback. And it would set it up in like a, a speed dating kind of format where uh, a senior manager responsible for one kind of form, uh, one area, like IT or um, estates or whatever, would, would go and join a group and then would move around intermittently uh, to discuss those issues with, with the staff with the, the reps. So uh, this has been part of our kind of wider extracurricular program, which is called Be Engaged. Uh, Be Engaged program itself is like a, a multi-strand program, uh, um, others being Be Environmental, Be Healthy, Be Entertained. So the Be Heard element of it is for the representation and advocacy of the students. So the, the use of the Be prefix was to kind of emphasise the onus on encouraging uh, learner success. Uh, and that's worked uh, to very well in the last few years that we've been adapting that. So the toolkit itself has been instrumental in us shaping a more kind of self-reflecting tone on uh, the communication and <clears throat> exposing ourselves to the difficult questions that we need to ask ourselves. Because uh, our main responsibility is to ensure that our product, educating, is fit for purpose in this, in this kind of COVID environment. So we're using the, the guidance to set about and creating a working model that's transparent and it's uncomplicated. Uh, so the students feel as though they can get invested in the process uh, and they're encouraged to be uh, open and honest, which they always are, brutally sometimes. And, uh, and they're assured that their input is valued. So it's important that they play their part, their part in the decision making and the evaluation of our continued working practices. Uh, and that often creates a kind of legacy effect that, that perhaps uh, future, uh, future cohorts of students are going to feel the benefits of uh, as we implement them. The way that we co collate the feedback uh, in this, in, uh, this time around was by utilising the class rep system. Uh, we invited them to attend structured focus forums, uh, specifically on the learner and teacher experience. And we used prescribed questions that were generated through the, the toolkit, uh, which led to the wider wider discussions. Uh, we had recently made changes to the, the class rep model within the Institute before lockdown, but fortunately the changes that we made kind of fitted in really well with this, with, with this kind of online format. Uh, the, form, the model that we're currently operating with is kind of three-tiered, three-tiered approach, which we feel offers kind of more flexibility uh, and provides an opportunity for students who are looking for more, take on more responsibility within the role they see it as a skill development opportunity. Uh, and we recognise that there's different levels of commitment, confidence, skills within the cohort of, of class reps. And we don't want to overburden a class rep with too much responsibility that they perhaps don't feel as though they're capable of doing quite yet or they have other commitments. So the class rep, the, 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 the first level of the class rep system, the three-tier system, is like the, your general class rep who now we've, we're in the, in the reaches of in between 400 and 450 reps within our, within our institution. And they're all, they're all nominated by their peers in the class, and they're given a, a very brief and a very generic kind of remit as to what their responsibilities are, which is almost entirely just disseminating and collating feedback uh, and data for our consumption. And how, we, and how we do that and how we communicate with them is that through using our technology or internal databases is that their course tutor can simply highlight their name on a register, which uh, we can grab uh, and create a, mail, a live mailing list uh, that we can communicate with those 400 reps um, at the drop of a hat or push of a button really about what's coming up or what kind of feedback we're looking for. And, they, and that is a live document, a live database, which if there's changes to the names of the, of the reps, people can get taken out, more people can get put in, and so it's always up to date with the, the latest names and information. So um, the, second, the second stage of, of the, the rep system is what we call our curriculum reps. Uh, we've identified that within certain curriculum areas, there could be as many as 10, 12 classes within a curriculum area. Now, if we are 
if we're looking for feedback from that entire curriculum area, rather than rather than us having twelve voices all kind of speaking, um, then we, we kind of nominate or, the, or the, the the faculty management nominate one of those one of those reps who they feel is is, is appropriate and is keen on taking on that more responsibility. And they can be like a, a united voice uh, to speak on behalf of all ten of those classes. And it's a similar it's a similar position that we're in with the entire class reps. Previously, when the, we're all allowed to come into the forums, when we're on a we're on a, a, an online forum, very difficult to try and allow four hundred and fifty people to have their say, have their voice heard. So, if we can filter it down and give responsibility to, to key reps within that, then we're we're kind of streamlining streamlining that that voice. Um, so the, the, the curriculum reps communicate with the class reps. They um, have access to the communication lines between them, and they will disseminate information and they'll collect, uh, collect, collect and collate information based on what uh, what responses they've gathered through their course. And that was that will be the basis of what's presented at these curriculum uh, feedback forums. Um, similarly, with uh, our third and highest level of responsibility, which is our faculty reps. So within each faculty, there may be three or four or five curriculum areas, uh, and they'll all feed into like a, a pyramid system where uh, a faculty rep will take responsibility for uh, engaging with those curriculum reps to, to, uh, to feed back um, more in more detail or be the, 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 the kind of conduit, if you like, between the, the faculty management and the rest of the, the reps. So with, with this kind of tiered pyramid system, uh, we're, we feel as we've got more focused voice and we're passing on responsibility to the reps to disseminate that information and ensure that, that uh, those voices are being heard. Um, during the forums, we passed on the responsibility of arranging the forums to the faculties themselves. The rationale behind that was to demonstrate uh, the, to the students, the faculty management team's willingness to engage and build re relationships with the reps themselves, because the students very often have never engaged or had an opportunity to have any kind of exchanges with faculty management. And this would be a clear demonstration of the willingness from the management to hear what the students have got to say and introduce themselves as well to them. Uh, and also the added advantage of that is during those faculty forum meetings, is that faculty management have the decision-making authority and uh, all the people who are present and they can make immediate and impactful changes to issues that are brought to their attention there and then and they, uh, for things that they might not have been necessarily aware of. And, and that all feeds into the strengthening of the relationship um, and increases the student confidence in the system of feedback and the likelihood of reps further engaging and providing feedback out with a forum setting now that they know who the people who they should be speaking to are. So the, the learning engagement's role uh, within this whole process is to facilitate, not to kind of mediate, and let these conversations kind of grow and these relationships develop between themselves and not all, and not seem as though they're being forced upon by a third party, i.e. the Student Association of Learning Engagement. So when we were arranging these and coordinating these forums, what we're, what we're really keen is to alleviate any natural concerns within the teaching staff um, that have, have heard any kind of pushback or any reticence about being involved in this, because they might naturally automatically feel as though it might kind of descend into kind of a mudslinging exercise, and and like it could be a negative exit, it could be a negative process. But we're reassuring that it's not kind of any kind of witch hunt or anything like that, and it's all kind of designed to be a positive experience to evaluate how we can help everybody in the process. Because we're obviously very aware, and the students are very aware, and give them the credit, they're very understanding and recognition of the students, uh, the staff experience of their having to adapt to new working conditions as well. And staff with long and successful teaching careers are all of a sudden thrust into this new environment where they're working from a dining room and they're being interrupted by the postman and stuff like that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new world, you know, and, uh, and, and, and there's an, a level of adaption, uh, adaptation required from, from the staff as well as the students. So we're, we're putting this process in place to try and celebrate the process, the progress that we've been making in such a short space of time. But we're always looking for the positives as well and that um, we've recognised through the feedbacks that we've had during the forums is that many of the working practices that have been kind of forced upon us have kind of only uh, proven to accelerate what 
perhaps the longer term vision of how we're going to deliver it would be in the first place. And uh, some of these practices are going to be here to stay, regardless of whether when we're allowed back on in, in full contact and full access to the campus. And uh, streamlining certain processes uh, and practices um, will just be the done thing now, and that will be the, the new normal. And so if we're trying to get any, um, to, to, to scrape any kind of positives and silver linings from, from the, the lockdown, then it, it, that, that might certainly be it. And also that it follows in with the college's ethos to working towards kind of carbon, reducing carbon emissions and green issues and environmental impacts um, that we are very keen on. Uh, so the consensus that we've had through our feedback process and our learning engagement is that, that it's been, a, that, that been widely successful and in general, the, the experience of the students has been that, that they've been fully informed and, and they've been able to make clear choices about their own progress and like in clear communication with, with our staff, with the staff that are teaching them. And um, they've been able to evaluate their own methods of learning as well. And, and it's encouraging them to have more, a more independent way of learning as well. And, to, and we're trying to put uh, things in place online, make things a lot more flexible to, to work in with the um, work in with the the, the the digital digital things that we're trying to put in place to, to allow that flexibility. Um, so I think that's okay. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah, thanks very much, Ross. Uh, that's great. And it's a, a timely reminder that you know it's it's about developing a whole set of skills uh, that are valuable beyond college, isn't it? And uh, you know, and and so there's it's part of broader learning opportunities uh, as well. I think before we, we, we come to the end of this part of, of, of the session, we've time probably to squeeze a, a, just a couple of quick responses from you both uh, in relation to a couple of uh, uh, questions. Uh, one question would be about what sort of tools you use to support the communication. And another question would be, have you seen any either increased levels of participation and different patterns within that? Because if we go back a lot of, activity in historically was focused around full-time students because they were on campus so are you seeing a shift uh, in that so um we'll ask ross first and then come to phil <clears throat> well any student any student that regardless of the method of learning or method of delivery whether it's part-time full-time they've got they're treated exactly the same they've got full access to all resources that are available and their experience in the college is just as valuable and our tagline is uh, for the college coming uh, uh, their new marketing campaign is is no one does no one's more deserving of this experience than you so or along those lines i'm paraphrasing but um that kind of demonstrates our, our recognition that there's, there's a, a whole uh, host of different methods of learning and people's kind of uh, how they use the resources and when we're, we're trying to just put a, a plan in place that is as accommodating to everybody as, as we can um, regardless of their method yeah and i, I don't know if uh, phil if you've noticed i've heard anecdotally that there's an increase in the number of part-time students becoming involved um you know it may be a factor of uh geography or the fact that you're you know just the different mechanisms that you use so i don't know if you've noticed that at all yeah, I think, um, you know, across the piece, this is as close as I've, I've worked with it uh, before, but what we have noticed is, yeah, a broader uh, range and demographic of students getting involved, particularly in our class rep system. You know, I've, I've been going in to sit in some meetings and, you know, I've been meeting students, for example, some students who have caring responsibilities saying to us, actually, if I hadn't been for these new ways of working, I probably wouldn't be engaging in this process, but actually I probably wouldn't be at college because it's really supporting what I need. You know, the thought of leaving the house for a day to be in college with my caring responsibilities was too much. So not only are we, you know, through some of these ways of working, and that was a wee bit about the stories I was alluding to at the start, we're finding these stories that are really important for us to learn. And, and so, yeah, I would say that we are getting a, a broader um, a range of students in, involved in the process, which is really, really encouraging. And I think a lot of that is down to the tools. So for example, we can convene meetings and focus groups at people's convenience, you know, and we're not trying to work everything just around the days and timetables that people are in college. So yeah, I would think it's 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 broadened the scope of those who are able to get involved. Yeah, so there are clear things which you're 
from what you're saying, you both have things you want to hang on to as we move. Uh, I'm going to try and avoid the new normal uh, word, <laughs> but to life beyond tight lockdown uh, and so on. Well, thanks very much uh, to you both uh, for your contributions today and, uh, you know, particularly Ross for very last minute uh, jumping into the breach. So, so thank you that, uh, for that. So uh, thank you again and take care. Bye.